Hi, I'm Arnie Skelton, and each week in this podcast series, I'm going to offer you my top 10 tips on particular topics or themes that might be of interest to you as a teacher or manager or both. Hi, and welcome to this week's podcast, which is on negotiation skills. In fact, this week is the first part of a two-part podcast on this topic, and the second part will be next week. Now, on to this week's topic, negotiation skills. And before I get to the top ten, a definition. My view of negotiation is a trading across variables to achieve a win-win outcome. You see, it's no good seeking I win, you lose. That simply creates resentment and a trigger for revenge, and you're unlikely to have a continuing and successful longer-term partnership. So, your mentality is to want both parties to benefit, not just you, at their expense. So, negotiation is seeking a win-win outcome through trading across variables. So, here we go. My top 10 tips for successful negotiation. Tip number one. Negotiation is different from haggling or splitting the difference. If you only have one variable, for example, price, you're bound to end up haggling or probably splitting the difference. I say £20, you say £10. I say, well, OK, what about 18 And you say, well, OK, 12 All you're doing is... is haggling over a single variable, in this case price, and that's not negotiation. For it to be negotiation, it has to consist of several variables. So tip number two, find the variables to trade. The more variables you can find, the more flexibility and power you have in creating a successful negotiation. There's more room for manoeuvre. So what do I mean by a variable? A variable is any factor or feature of the negotiation that can vary, that can be higher or lower, more or less, bigger or smaller. And most things fit that bill. Most things can be varied. So work out what your variables are. Price, cost, timing, volume, location, insurance, method of payment, All of those things are variables. And not only work out yours, find out from the other party what theirs are. Put all the variables on the table. So tip number two, identify the variables for both parties. Tip number three, see everything as a variable. Maybe that sounds obvious now, but so many people enter a negotiation with a view that a particular feature of that negotiation is fixed. A single price, or a single cost, or a single date, or a single delivery method. Think, for instance, of methods of payment. You may be assuming cash, but it could be card, it could be direct debit, it could be a standing order, it could be a series of payments over a period of time. So, think of variables for every feature. Consider the flexibility in each variable. To tip number three, see everything as a variable. Tip number four, work out which variables are your priority. What matters most to you? It could be the price, or it could be volume, the number of events. It could be method of payment. It could be means of transport. It could be a particular date or deadline. What are your priorities? Then, find out what their priorities are amongst the variables. You're more likely to have a successful negotiation if each of you has a slightly different priority. So, for example, I might want volume and the other person might want a cheaper price. Well, we have an ability to to trade on that. I will give you a lower price if you buy more product. So, tip number four. Work out each party's priorities. Tip number five. Decide in your negotiation strategy 
if there's anything that's not negotiable, and then what is negotiable. So decide the negotiables and the non-negotiables. It may well be that you have no movement on price. It may be that you have no movement on deadline. It may be that you have no movement on insurance. Work out beforehand just what your variables are and what's non-negotiable. Tip number six. The other crucial element in a successful negotiation is deciding how you work your way through each variable. Imagine the following three terms. Ideal, fallback and bottom line. Ideal is the ideal outcome for you on each variable. So if one of the variables is price, what's the ideal, the best possible price that you're looking for? Set the ideal for each of your variables. Then work out one or more what we call fallback positions. If there's resistance to your ideal price, which there may well be in a negotiation, then what will you fall back to? And then finally, what's your bottom line? the line below which you will not go. Here's an example on price. Your initial ideal price is £20. That's the most you would want or expect from the negotiation. That's your ideal. But the other party is unwilling to pay that, so your fallback might be, I don't know, £18. And you may have a second fallback to £15. But you're not going to go lower than 12 So your ideal is 20 Four back one is 18, four back two is 15, and your bottom line is 12. You do the same for all your variables. So your ideal deadline would be, I don't know, in a month's time. But you can fall back to something a bit later, let's say six weeks' time, and your bottom line might be two months. It's got to be within the next two months to maintain that price. The idea of having this ideal fallback bottom line approach is that you can trade one variable for another variable through the use of this mechanism. So in order to gain something you want from the other party, you're prepared to trade your position on your own variables. So in order, for example, to fix a price from the other party, you're prepared to reduce your... Um, delivery costs. So trade across the variables from ideal to fallback to bottom line. But whatever happens, don't go below your bottom line. So tip number six, trade your variables from ideal to fallback to bottom line. Tip number seven, understand that the bottom line outcome on any variable is still a win for you. You've set it as a bottom line, so it must be acceptable. So anything above your bottom line, a fallback or an ideal, is a bonus. If I'm in a negotiation with another party, and the outcome is I am settling on bottom lines for all my variables, I still regard that as a positive result. Because, after all, it was a bottom line. It was acceptable to me as a minimum. Some people think if you don't get your ideal, then you're losing. That's just not true. The bottom line is still a win. If it isn't, of course, then you shouldn't be setting it as a bottom line. The bottom line is the minimum acceptable to you. So anything above your bottom line is a bonus. So tip number seven, see bottom line outcomes as wins. Tip number eight. In a negotiation, you can get stuck. Keep searching for new variables. Use your creativity to find anything that you can now offer into the negotiation that you can be flexible around and that becomes an attraction to the other person. Remember that they may not think of something as a variable until you introduce it either as a completely new variable or something that can be flexed, that can be changed. 
Be careful not to take anything for granted, not to take everything or anything as fixed. Keep searching. Tip number eight, keep searching for new variables. Tip number nine, and this comes right at the beginning of the negotiation. If you are not sure, ask the other person, are we having a negotiation? Is this a negotiation? It will tell you straight away what the other person's approach is. If they say no, then what they're really doing is offering you a fixed outcome. Ultimately, an ultimatum. Take it or leave it. If they say yes, it means that they mentally, emotionally, are thinking of room for manoeuvre, are thinking of shifting on what their opening position is. And that's quite helpful to actually consider whether or not the other person is in a negotiation frame of mind. So tip number nine, ask the other person, are we having a negotiation? Is this a negotiation? And tip number ten, be sensitive and resistant to the other person's negotiation tactics. Skilled and experienced negotiators may well try to gain the upper hand by using some fairly subtle and possibly manipulative techniques to put you under an obligation to concede ground and to give more than you perhaps otherwise want. And that's going to be the focus of part two of next week's podcast. So next week is Negotiation Skills Part 2, Key Negotiation Tactics and How to Withstand Them. So that's it for today. Thank you for listening. On the 16th of October, I'll be running a healthy living workshop with my brilliant nutritionist, Anna. It's a half-day workshop from 10 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon and will be held in Manchester. It'll cost £40 per place and in my view it can be life-changing, as it was for me. If you'd like more information or want to book a place, then please email me at Arnie Skelton, A-R-N-I-E-S-K-E-L-T-O-N, at E-T-D-U-K dot co dot U-K. That's a Healthy Living Workshop on the 16th of October in Manchester. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this podcast, make sure you subscribe. You will still get the podcast for free, but you will also get an alert to let you know when the next podcast is available. And please recommend the podcast to anyone else you think might like it and benefit from it. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a review and any other comment, because they'll help promote the podcast series on the relevant platform. So, bye for now.